I'm Dan Aykroyd. In addition to my work as a writer and actor, I have also pursued a lifelong interest in the paranormal and the supernatural. Years ago, I became involved with the experts, scientists, and academics attached to the Office of Scientific Investigation and Research, the OSIR. Their objective? To verify the nature of the inexplicable, to explore the psi factor, the unknown. The following story is inspired by such events and is taken from the actual case files of the OSIR. Hi. I'm so sorry I'm late. Oh, no. Oh my God, this is looking so good news. Every day it gets better, doesn't it? Oh, I know, but it's a money pit. I had no idea how much it was going to cost us to fix this place, though. Yeah, I know, neither did I. Therefore, that is the best bottle of Merlot I could afford, okay? Excuse me, when did you start modeling again? <laughs> Since now. I'm all around useful guy. Hey, Sue canceled at the last minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait till we get the floors done in here. Oh, yeah, I rented the standard for Tuesday, okay? Tuesday it is. I wish you were finished. Oh, honey, it's going to be, you know what? This is going to be so much better than working in our old space, huh? Why don't I start with uh, a 10-minute pause? This one. And you can see why it was so upsetting. It was like something was invading my mind. That's not anything like the pose I was doing. It's not me. And everyone had the same experience? Yes. Even me, and I wasn't even drawing. Was it a new class? Friends. But we've been drawing together for years. Yeah, but it was the first time we were drawing in the new space. Do the three of you own the studio together? No, technically it's Lucinda's place. Yeah, she's the one with the inheritance. It was gonna be torn down, so we got a great deal on it. Yeah, Brandon and I do a lot of the fix-up work. But we all three are gonna start teaching here once classes start, officially start next month. There is a class. <laughs> How well do you all know each other? 
this lifetime? Why don't we start there? Biblically? If you know what I mean. Uh, Brandon and Luce dated in high school. <laughs> dated. Yeah, whatever. And then I uh, met them in art school, and then Luce and I hooked up for a while. Hooked up? Whatever. It sounded like a good idea at the time, okay? Then Brandon and Crystal were together for years. Three. Yeah, we were just working out a bit of karma there. Past lives. Yeah, we go way, way, way back. Do you all remember past lives? Um, just Crystal. Well, when she gets a feeling about something, she's uh, usually right. Go. Apparently, everyone in the drawing class knows each other. And the owners, who well, they're so interconnected, would need a sociometric diagram to understand their relationships. What have you got so far? Well, the original church was built in 1827. The congregation moved out about the mid-70s, and the building's been vacant for about 23 years. And I found no reports of paranormal events. Okay. Well, it looks like the whole group was affected. A lot like some kind of collective mind thing. Yeah, well, they were probably in an alpha state when they were drawing. You know, that would make them more open to their subconscious minds and each other. A group hysteria or a shared telepathy? Well, if it is some form of telepathic communication, we should look at the model. Brandon, I'll follow up with him. You know, if they are in an alpha state, that would make them more open to just about any phenomena. I'll check for electromagnetic fields, see if I can't find some reason for the artist to be hallucinating. Oh, while you're at it, check for toxic chemicals. You got it. You didn't notice any unusual sounds or moved objects? No. I don't remember any strange sounds or anything like that. Except while we were drawing. It felt like I could hear something, ki kind of um, high-pitched. Musical? No, I'm, I'm not sure what it was. It, it wasn't melodic. You didn't notice any uh, extreme change in temperature or strange smells? It was cold. But I think that's because my furnace just died the big death. <laughs> we bought this place because it just felt right somehow. My friend Crystal says it has a good vibe. I know that probably sounds kind of flaky. No, not at all. We've been fixing this place up for the last month. I've been here almost every day. I've never felt anything ugly here until drawing class. It was terrifying. We're gonna do the best we can. Thanks for coming. So, you think these images are coming from me? From inside my head? Could be. That's what we're gonna try and find out. Any idea what the drawings are about? No. Well, uh, reminds me a little bit of uh, 15th century French work, but it's, uh, it's different, too. It's more aggressive. Does it have any personal meaning to you? No. But the image was in your mind during the drawing class. Yeah, it was in my mind, all right. But I, I don't think it came from me. I felt more like it came through me. Let's go find out. It felt like something was trying to communicate with us. Something? I don't know. I couldn't get a handle on it, and usually I can tell. How? Yeah, I, I just get a sense about things. What kinds of things? Just stuff I, I, I can help with, like, um, the, the energies in buildings, past lives, people's auras. The odd premonition. What is it? It felt like we were part of an experiment. God, I can't believe I'm saying this. It's okay. Like lab rats in a, a terrible experiment that just goes on and on forever. Like, there's no escape. I mean, what is that? 
I want you to remember this. And during your drawing class, I want you to keep this image in mind. Try to send it out to the others. And what if I can't? Don't worry about it. Stay as relaxed as you can. Use your breathing. Like meditation, right? The more relaxed you are, the clearer our results will be. Thanks. Brandon's all set up with an image to focus on. Good. And one of us should participate in the test. Well, it's primarily an emotional experience, so it would be good to get an objective account. Rule out any possibility of a hoax while we're at it. Don't look at me. I, I already know what the image is. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I can't draw to save my life. <laughs> good, then it's settled. Thanks. All right, Mia. We're all set at this end. Gotcha. We're almost there. I appreciate you all coming back. I know it wasn't easy for some of you. You've all met Lindsay from the OSIR. Hi. Hi. The idea here is to recreate your last drawing class as closely as possible. We've got some monitoring equipment set up, which will hopefully help us understand what happened. Okay, Lindsay, we're live. All right. Let's get started. But first, are there any questions? Uh, should we concentrate on anything in particular? Just do what you would normally do. Focus on your drawing. The more relaxed we can be, the better. Let's go. Um, should I start with the exact same pose? That's a good idea, Brandon. Whenever you're ready. energy narrow band so signals like that can travel incredible distances from as far out as deep space Lindsay, what's going on? I can see it. Face. So clearly. It's looking right at me. Oh my God. It feels. It feels evil. I can hear something. It's, it sounds like an, like an organ. No, no, it's just sounds. What do you want from us? Lindsay, what's going on? Lindsay, answer me. Tried to send the control image, right? Yeah, I tried. Circle in the square. I really concentrated. Just that face kept invading my mind. How did you feel? Dizzy. See, you may be acting as some kind of transmitter. Oh, have you ever had the sense that something was being communicated through you? Brandon? Tell her. I lost some time. Like a blackout. It was a couple of years back up at the point. Where? Gorman's Point. Is that near here? About half a mile away. Look, I don't remember much. I just saw lights in the sky. Kind of hovering. There were little lights. 
How high? I don't know. Above the trees. Can you show me where? <sighs> yeah. He doesn't like to talk about it. He's afraid he's been abducted. There are records of sightings at Gorman's Point going back to the last century. Usually, lights in the sky. These photographs were taken in the 1950s. Any abductions? No. Well, that means either there weren't any, or people just didn't want to report them. Um, it's about <clears throat> two years ago, around this time of year. Crystal and I came up here to hang out. We were uh, right over there. Crystal said the place had uh, bad karma, negative energy. I still wanted to check out the view. She wanted to leave. I made fun of her for being a bit of a flake. You know what happened? We had a fight. Fight? Yeah. She, um, she stormed off that way. She was kind of pissed at me. So after I cooled off, I, I went back to my truck, to go and look for her. It was uh, a few minutes before 11. I thought I'd, you know, talk to her, see if she wanted to go see a late movie or something, patch things up. That's when I saw the lights in the sky. Then what happened? Black. Nothing. What was the first thing you remember when you woke up? Steering wheel. I had my head up against the steering wheel. It was 11.21. How'd you feel when you woke up? Sick. Everything was all wavy, like, like an acid flashback. I mean, I was, I was sicker than a dog for a whole week after that. Like, like some kind of a flu or something. Was I abducted? The length of time Brandon experienced a blackout is similar to other abductee accounts. But he has no memory of it. No. You'd think he'd retain some images of the experience in his subconscious if it was something he'd actually gone through. He said he felt sick, right? I mean, maybe he did pass out. People often think they see lights just before they black out. Well, if it weren't for all the other sightings at Gorman's Point. Yeah. I talked to Dr. Mitchum at the university. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's been studying these lights for over 20 years. He thinks they're a geological phenomena. Like swamp gas? Well, yeah, something like that. But catch this. He said they defy explanation in current scientific terms. And he said that they disappear every time he tries to investigate them. Rocks don't move when they're investigated. Why would geologically cause lights? I know. You gotta have some sort of intelligence. You okay? They said I could have had a close encounter of the second kind. I'm freaking out, Luz. I can't get those images out of my head. I know. Me too. You think it's me? You think I'm the one sending those images to the group? I finished the full psych work up on Brandon. Anything interesting? He's pretty sane. He's got a stronger imaginal light than your average Joe, but that's normal for an artist. You think there's any connection between his possible abduction and the images from the drawing group? Could be. He's been expressing extreme fear and anxiety about it. Maybe it's that fear that he's projecting. Let it go.
hell? It's the same low pulsing energy as before. But there's no drawing class going on. doing just before the lights went out? Were you drawing? Having sex. Do you think that had something to do with it? Well, sex can cause an altered state of consciousness, like focused creative work, so maybe. I brought you some herbal tea. Thanks. It'll help warm you up. Relax your bodies a bit more. Never been more terrified in my life. Was it anything like what happened before? I heard the organ sounds. But it was clearer than the other times. It's as if the old organ was playing in the studio. Did you hear that as well? Yeah. They were right. There really is a hell. Who was right? My crazy family. I heard voices in my head. Burn in hell, Ethan. Burn in hell. You didn't hear that? Oh, God. It's just me. It's just me. Let it go. No, the equipment's fried. Well, there goes our budget. You know, let's see if I can salvage something. Well, I checked out the entire studio. There's nothing anomalous. Well, at least not now. And the temperature's back to normal, so it appears the furnace is working just fine. Well, the power surge could have shut it off, as well as the lights. Well, the cold could be part of the energy field itself. So, what happened with Brandon and Lucinda? Well, they both felt extreme anxiety. They both heard organ music, but Lucinda also heard voices. Voices that said, burn in hell, heathen. Voices that Brandon didn't hear. Hell. <laughs> well, Lucinda was part of every experience. Maybe, maybe Brandon's receiving her thoughts telepathically. Let's keep her overnight for observation. Let's deal with the equipment tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Full of plaster. What? No, there's no way these pipes can make any sound at all. They're all plugged up. Hello? Hi. Hi. I got your message. You wanted to talk to me? Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you about Lucinda and Brandon, as long as you're okay with that. Oh, no, sure. Great. You know them fairly well. Do you know if there's anything unusual going on in their relationship right now? No. Were they sleeping together again? I didn't say that. No, but you were thinking it. 
Now, does that bother you? What, them sleeping together? Oh, no, of course not. It makes them happy. Would you say that Lucinda has any kind of sexual hang-ups? Well, now that girl's family, they are a bunch of abusive religious nut bars. Oh, mm -hmm. she told you mm -hmm. about them? Yes, yeah, she mm -hmm. did. But Luce, no, she's not exactly what you'd call repressed. What about guilt? No, not really. I mean, 12 years of therapy has got to be good for something, right? Mm. Well, I would hope so. Is that all you wanted to ask me? There is one other thing. Mm -hmm. That night at Gorman's Point, what made you want to leave? The vibe. The vibe was way off. Was it anything like the way you felt when we were drawing together? Yeah. It felt like the same kind of uh, negative resonance. But the difference is... The energy at Gorman's point is like a memory. Whereas the feeling I get when we draw is more like a premonition. Like, I, I got visions of damnation. But if you think it's coming from loose, you're way off. You scored below average. Means I, I can't send telepathic messages? Not any more than the control group, no. So I'm just hearing things from my own mind? We think there's more to it than that. <sighs> the gradations of light and dark are so evocative. Pure school. It's Italian, isn't it? Light, dark. Yeah. Da Vinci, Rembrandt, Caravaggio, that's what gave their work such power. It refers to oil painting, but you can pretty much use the concept with any medium. Here, I'll show you. Chiaroscuro refers to the artist's ability to work with shadow. And that's our purpose, really, isn't it? As artists and as, and as people, to enter the shadow and let the light emerge. See? You get the light from the dark. Hmm. Circle. Triangle. Q. Number nine. Why? He's scoring very high for telepathic receptivity. And what does that mean exactly? You're picking up telepathic images like a television picks up broadcast signals.
cold. Interference with electrical equipment. Inexplicable music. All typical signs of haunting. Everyone in the drawing group believed someone or something was trying to communicate with them, invading their minds. Lucinda keeps referring to hell, but what Crystal and I drew, it looks more like heaven. Crystal believes the negative energy was similar at the church in Gorman's Point. What's the connection? We have unexplained lights that move when investigated, suggesting some sort of intelligence. Ghost lights. Up until the turn of the century, unexplained lights in the sky were called ghost lights. Corpse candles. Communications from the spirits of the dead. The lights could be a form of haunting. And that could be the connection between Gorman's Point and the church. I'll check into the history, see if there's anything that merits a haunting. I'm gonna go back to where Brandon first saw the lights. Presents. Let's see what we have here. Oh, you've got your sage, and you've got your tarot cards. We've got your crystal. And, honey, you cannot forget the salt. Oh, and ta-da. Spirit board. Yep, I made it myself, and it's for you to keep. Thanks. Listen, who send it? The energy in this place really shifted this afternoon, but just in case, I, I think we should try and make peace with whatever's sharing this space with us. But first, food. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, Mia? Yes? I found something here. It's foundations of what I'm guessing was once a house. What kind of time frame are we looking at, Pete? Well, she said, I don't know. 100 years, maybe older? We'll check into the deeds and records and see if anything turns up. Okay. Brandon, can you get us a wine glass, please? No, I don't want to mess with it. Don't run from this news. It's happening for a reason. What reason? Maybe we disturbed it by being here. Upset it a little. Or maybe it senses that we can help it. I'm up for it. gonna talk to it, honey. We'll see what it wants. What if it wants to torture and kill us? No, I don't think it does. Not after what happened this afternoon. Yeah. 
Yeah, go ahead, Lindsay. We've got some info on the house. Probably belonged to a Mary Nelson. She was the sole resident of a farm on Gormitz Point from 1853 to 1897. Did you get anything on her death? We'll check the obituaries. Lindsay? The lights are back, hovering right above the foundation, just like Brandon said. Gone. Okay. Don't be afraid. Please. We don't want to harm you. We just want to talk to you. I can hear it. Hear what? Bird in hell. The work of Satan. I don't believe. I don't believe it. I don't believe in evil. I don't believe it. This isn't Satan. It's a spirit or an energy or something, but no, this is insane. It's so dark. It's so twisted. Aren't we all some days? Cute old school. Work with the shadow, honey. Who are you? Mary Nelson, spinster, died in her home on October 12, 1897. Memorial service November 17th. Worn by the members of Gorman Methodist Church. The art studio. Where she played the organ. Her music will be much missed. Spirits tend to haunt places where they were happiest. The most common form of spirit communication is telepathy. But why send images of torture? Well, she was a spinster from the last century. Uh, most likely a pretty straight-laced kind of woman. Now the artists... Are not. Nudity, sex, and the church. Now, to Mary, they're heathens who are going to burn in hell. So we may have been drawing Mary's visions of heaven and hell. So if the lights are a manifestation of Mary's spirit... She may be on her way to the church. We just want to help you. We want to talk to you. to burn in hell for their sins. 
desecrating my church with the acts of Satan. Why are you here? I come here every day. You've been dead for over a hundred years, Mary. No. You've inhabited someone else's body. You died. Look at your hands. Dear Father in heaven. You're a spirit now, Mary. It's time for you to leave this place. I don't know how. Please. I want to be with my Lord in heaven, please. Mary, you've got to go to the light. Go to the light. Close your eyes. Find the light. Let yourself float. Float into the light. You can do it. Don't be afraid. Case manager's final log. Lindsay Donner reporting. All evidence of paranormal activity at the art studio has disappeared, and there have been no more sightings of light above Gorman's Point. Donner out. In the last 50 years, there have been more than 200,000 reported sightings and encounters with UFOs and extraterrestrials. While many sightings have Earth-based explanations, those that don't have led many people to accept the existence of these crafts and beings as a reality. Is it simply arrogance which leads us to think that we are the only intelligent life form in the multiverse? For Sci Factor, I'm Dan Aykroyd.